behavioral approach. The behavioral approach focuses exclusively on what leaders do and how they act in various contexts. Research has uncovered two general kinds of behaviors, task behaviors and relationship behaviors. The behavioral approach reminds leaders that in some situations they need to be more task oriented and followers need leaders who provide a lot of direction, whereas in others, followers need leaders who can show them a great deal of nurturance and support. Task behaviors are those that facilitate goal accomplishment in order to achieve objectives and include such acts as organizing work, giving structure to the work context, defining role responsibilities, and scheduling work activities. Relationship behaviors are those that help group members feel comfortable with themselves, with each other, and with the situation in which they find themselves in, and include building camaraderie, respect, trust, and liking between leaders and followers. For example, take two college professors with different styles. Dr. Smith takes attendance, reviews the syllabus, explains assignments, and dismisses the students for the day. In contrast, Professor Jones, who comes in, introduces herself, goes over the syllabus, tries to help students get to know each other by having them introduce themselves, their majors, and favorite non-academic activities. Can you tell the two different types of styles here? The following are the strengths of the behavioral approach. It broadened the scope of leadership to include the behaviors of leaders and what they do in various situations. No longer was the focus of leadership on the personal characteristics of leaders. A wide range of studies on leadership behavior validates and gives credibility to the basic tenets of the approach. Researchers of the behavioral approach have ascertained that a leader's style consists primarily of two major types of behaviors task and relationship. The key to becoming an effective leader often rests on how the leader balances these two behaviors. The behavioral approach provides us with a broad conceptual map that is worthwhile to use in our attempts to understand the complexities of leadership. Based on the behavioral approach, leaders can assess their actions and determine how they may want to change to improve their leadership behaviors. There are a few criticisms of the behavioral approach. The research on the behavioral approach has not adequately shown how leaders' behaviors are associated with performance outcomes. Research has not been able to establish a consistent link between task and relationship behaviors and outcomes such as morale, job satisfaction, and productivity. This approach has failed to found a universal style of leadership that could be effective in almost every situation. The behavioral approach implies that the most effective leadership style is the high-high style, meaning high task and high relationship. At this point in the development of research on the behavioral approach, it remains unclear whether the high-high style is the best style of leadership. The behavioral approach has come from a U.S.-centric perspective, reflecting the norms and values of U.S. culture. Results have shown that different cultures prefer different leadership styles than those favored by current U.S. management practice. The behavioral approach can be applied easily in ongoing leadership settings. This approach provides a mirror for managers that is helpful in answering the frequently asked question, how am I doing as a leader? Many leadership training and development programs throughout the country are structured along the lines of the behavioral approach giving managers questionnaires that assess in some way their task and relationship behaviors towards followers. The behavioral approach applies to nearly everything a leader does. It is an approach that is used as a model to teach managers how to improve their effectiveness and organizational productivity. The managerial leadership grid's purpose was to explain how leaders help organizations to reach their goals. The grid is based on both a leader's concern for people, relationships, plotted on the y-axis, and production or tasks, plotted on the x-axis. 1-1. One, one, impoverished management. Exertion of minimum effort to get required work done as appropriate to sustain organization membership. The leader has little contact with followers and are described as indifferent, non-committal, uninvolved, and apathetic. 1-9. Country club management, thoughtful attention to the needs of the people for satisfying relationships, 
leads to a comfortable, friendly organization atmosphere and work tempo. The leader tries to create a positive climate by being agreeable, eager to help, comforting, and non-controversial. 9-1, authority compliance management. Efficiency in operations results from arranging conditions of work such that human interference is minimal. The leader is seen as controlling, demanding, hard driving, and overpowering. 5-5, five, five, middle of the road management. Adequate organization performance is possible through balancing the necessity to get work out while maintaining morale of people at a satisfactory level. The leader is described as expedient, prefers the middle ground, swallows their conviction in the interest of progress. 9-9, nine, nine, team management. Work accomplishment is from committed people Interdependence through a common stake in organization purpose leads to relationships of trust and respect. The leader stimulates participation, acts determined, makes priorities clear, follows through, behaves open-mindedly, and enjoys working. The behavioral approach is different from the trait and skills approaches to leadership because it focuses on what leaders do rather than who leaders are. The Leader Behavior Description Questionnaire, the LBDQ, identifies initiation of structure and consideration as the core leadership values. Your results on the LBDQ give you data about your task orientation and people orientation. The focus of this questionnaire has two primary types of behaviors, task behaviors and relationship behaviors. How leaders combine these two types of behaviors to influence others, is the central focus of the behavioral approach. Your task score refers to the degree to which you help others by defining their roles and letting them know what is expected of them. This factor describes your tendencies to be task directed toward others when you are in a leadership position. Whereas your relationship score is a measure of the degree to which you try to make followers feel comfortable with themselves each other, and the group itself. It represents a measure of how people-oriented you are.